In this episode, we're going to rescue a 1966 Chevelle. The problem is, it's uh, 600 miles from me and I've never seen it. I bought her on the old interwebs. Seemed like a good deal. Uh, it also doesn't have an engine. Not to worry though. I'm going to make one really quick off of this good stuff on the garage floor here. And then we're going to put it in the back of an old square body big block Suburban and drive it 600 miles there. Put said motor into the Chevelle, hope that it runs, and then drive it 600 miles home. And I've got three days to do it because i got to get back to work. I don't really know what can go wrong here. Well, I'm loaded up and fueled, so I'm going to hit the road in the big block here and see if we can't get this motor over to uh, North Dakota. about 180 miles in, which means I need to fill the oil and the gas. It's getting a little warm, just when I stop. But it's like 95, it's unusually warm up here, so in the north. But it's still alright, it's running good. So I'm going to top off the fluids and keep on running. Well, we made her in late last night, and the old Suburban ran really good. The only complaint, I guess, is the 348 million gallons of fuel, but that comes with these big blocks. Uh, it's Memorial Weekend. Beautiful weather out. Thanks to all those guys and gals that served. Appreciate the heck out of you, and I'm proud of you. Um, just moving some stuff around here in the yard quick, and then let's go find this Chevelle, and take a walk around, see what we got, and then we got to start thrashing because we've only got a day here to get this motor put in this girl and see if we can get some tire smoke from her. Let's go find it. Here she is. Chevelle 300, four door, 1966. Bought this from a nice guy online. Seem to be really honest, and it's a actually is a pretty straight car. Not sure if the hose comes with it or not, but let's see if we can work that in. Has the rear cooling option. What makes this car so worth it is the headliner is actually really nice, so I can kind of forgo all the other stuff. But uh, here's the kind of the issue at hand is we're missing some stuff here but what I really like is the lack of digital kind of everywhere else we just got a wire for the old starter and some stuff for the battery that's about it and we'll go find the motor here in a second I unloaded it last night show you what we got there Here's the weapon of choice, uh, primarily built that the night before last, a couple nights before that. I guess uh, just parts laying around the garage. It's a factory rotating assembly, it was a 383. I put a 350 crank back in it, since we're going to have a 10 inch clutch, a little 10 bolt rear, and a little 3 speed. I don't want to grenade that and lose a leg. so. We basically have a 355 now, it's 30 over. It does have molly rings, the heads have been rebuilt, they're factory junk heads, uh, 194, 15 valves. Did put some comp springs in it, 600 lift springs. And then it's got a custom grind cam from comp. Um, I think it's a 5, 545 lift, somewhere around there. Old wire intake that I cleaned up with a wire brush. Some other used parts, junk and stuff. Uh, the only thing new, really, that we're going to be putting in this is the clutch in hopes that we can get a good 15 to 20 burnouts out of it. So I really don't think the 10 inch is going to last. Um, so that's really it. We're going to start unloading parts and pieces and tools and all of that. Get the car rolled out in the driveway up in jack stands. And I think the plan is to pull the transmission out 
and mate the two on the shop floor and then try to stab her back in. So. Well, we got the transmission out and then we realized that we have zero hardware for anything related to the transmission, including the pressure plate and flywheel. And we don't have the clutch pivot ball, which the guy at Napa here in this small town said he's never even heard of. So we are now headed to, uh, is it a gun guard or a guy's house? A guy's house, and we're going to take one out of the pickup that's at his house and hope he doesn't notice. And then cannonball back to the house and start putting the thing together. By the way, this is my brother Chris right here. And we look exactly alike. Smile. Smile. What we need is the clutch pivot ball more than anything. All right, the new Duralast Jackhawk 6000 OEM stock clutch that's going to blow out in five seconds is on. We're putting the starter on now because we're lazy and don't want to lay under the car. And then we'll bolt the old three speed up to it and put it in. We also robbed this fan off of that truck that we found and all this kind of auto magically went together pretty good. So we're getting pretty close. This is our setup over here. I went ahead and just brought her all the way off the ground so her bellies don't hang on the frame so much. The old cherry picker wouldn't reach quite far enough, so you know we didn't cut any corners and did the right thing here. And we're just gonna go ahead and drill our own hole. There's the factory one. We made her own, and then Chris made sure that she really wasn't gonna go anywhere. And uh, take two, we're gonna try it again. She snagged in, but we got a. We're gonna zip that off so they can with the thing to do the stuff over here. Uh, but she's sitting in pretty nice. We got like 11 billion room back here, so that's good. Go ahead, death wheel that thing. Be sure not to wear safety glasses. Is this gonna hit anything else? Yeah, it's not gonna fit in there at all. She's a little hot. Basically took the motor all the way out to get the headers in and luckily one of the three sets that we had fit. So chances of finishing those up. And we brought her in the garage because it's like 643 degrees and I got the old back waterfall going on. Um, I'm gonna put the uh, distributor in 
and get the carburetor on. And for some reason, this car doesn't have any fuel lines from the back all the way forward, so I'm going to do the right thing and just run rubber hose all the way to the front. So I'll give you an update here in a little bit. Got her? All right, I'll get the test light out. All right, we're gonna go through a final checklist of sorts, which is basically does it have a key and gasoline. And uh, we got it outside, so when it lights on fire, we decided we're gonna push it into my brother's house. He doesn't like it much, he wants a remodel, so that's kind of the plan there. Um, I think she's pretty much ready to go there, you can see it behind me. Not too much duct tape, and uh, there are a lot of zip ties and vice grips in it though, so we'll see what happens. Plan is typical break, and I haven't even fired this motor yet, so uh, we're going to try to run her for 20 minutes or so, see if we can keep it cool. We'll uh, drive it after that, hopefully, and then we'll change the oil. And you know, just beat on it a little bit. Right, here we go. runs pulled it up to the garage here it's overheating and uh, we heated it up about 17 times so that's pretty good got about uh, two or three melted spark plug wires and really surprising is the quadrajet carburetor's junk that's on it imagine that so we've got another one back here in the garage we're gonna try if not I'll just bolt on a metal brock and be done with it so Right now we're going to eat and have some adult beverages and we're going to get after it again, but day's not even close to over and we did it. We got her in in one day. And uh, it did move on its own power, so transmission works, clutch works. So all is good, my friends. Alright, so it's the next day. Uh, basically doing a shakedown today and then we're going to be hitting the road. Uh, as you can see, it keeps getting hot. It's got that little little radiator in there for the inline six, so it's really struggling to keep this V8 cool. Uh, we thought about trying to throw in another radiator from the truck we've got around here, but it's too wide. And I'm in VFD and there's no other radiators that we can find, so we're gonna try to dump it out with this one. Um, I also burned off every single wire, basically within a foot of the headers. So we're having to rewire the starter right now. I actually had to push start it. I did have my camera with me. That was fairly interesting. I'm gonna drop the break-in oil out of it, change the oil, and then we're gonna go give her some more and uh, pack up and hit the road. Well, since we can't put in a different radiator, the plan was to take this fan, three-blade fan, out and put in this fan thing from the truck but I happen to notice that the weep hole on the water pump has been steadily getting worse and leaking and leaking and leaking which is a brand new pump but we're going to take the pump do the right thing again and we're going to take the pump off of a motor that's been sitting outside for two years probably three years two years outside um, Pretty sure it ran cool, so we're gonna pull that one off, take the new pump off, put that one in, and then put the weird truck style fan in it. Then I think finally, 
fingers crossed we can go feed on it a little bit. No metal. That's a good sign. Don't see any rings coming out or bearing. All right, we're trying to fill her with water one more time. Got the new uh, water pump in and the different fan configuration hopefully pull some more air through it. I did put a thermostat back in and I put a 160 in. I'm going to try to slow the water down through the radiator. Um, and then we're going to go have some fun and see if we can keep her under 300. So hang tight and uh, we'll be on the road here in a minute. Sounds pretty good. I think we're going to test on it a little bit. I'm all filled up. Got the oil topped off. Uh, I think I'm ready to go. Plan is to just get as far as I can before the motor overheats and locks up. Then just leave the keys in her and push her in the ditch, I guess. Uh, I do, however, have a flat head screwdriver and a vice grip, so I got all the tools a guy would ever need to do any roadside repairs. I don't carry spare tires because that takes all the fun and the risk out of it, you know? And uh, we'll just see what happens.
Well, we made her about 50 miles, and uh, she's running pretty hot. And so am I. So I'm going to get an adult beverage since we're so far into the trip. And then maybe the motor will cool down that way. So a couple things I just thought of. If you travel a lot, you're on the road a lot, like I am. I just washed my hair with some Don dish soap in the kitchen sink this morning. And man, it turned out nice. I get this like lemony smell that just keeps swirling around my head, which is really important because you probably can't see it, but there's basically just parts of seed foam and mouse nests that just keep blowing around in here repeatedly. It was so bad, in fact, that this morning I went ahead and fixed up the seat. She looks factory now. Uh, but that kind of minimized how much seat foam and mouse nest was blowing in here. I promised the original owner I'd keep the name of this car. I can't remember it off the top of my head. It was like Azura or something like that. But I have to give it a last name, so it's going to be Azura Hantavirus. It's officially the Hantavirus 66. And it just smells like you know, a tent full of piss, put it that way. Well, it's raining, but I'm okay with that because it's running cooler and it's not 487 degrees in the car right now. And uh, I'm going to take advantage of it. alive um, just pulling back into uh, Minnesota 600 miles she made it my eyes you I don't know well actually you probably can see it they're shot just so much exhaust fumes just you know the whole way and all I can smell is my sturds and my ears are just ringing from the headers but all in all, good. The motor drank about 348.6 gallons of water from all the rain, but it definitely kept her cool, which is a plus. Uh, but I'm really happy for throwing together a yard sale, small block, hoofing it out there 600 miles back. Rear end didn't blow. I thought for sure the transmission would grenade, but she held up. Even the electrotronics, I had the digital headlights running and uh, pretty pleased overall. Now I gotta figure out what to do with this. Maybe a turbo or a six speed or I don't know, something. I'm gonna push her back in the old tree row and hang on to her for a little bit and see if we can do something else to it. Uh, but that's it, Antivirus 66, we made her home. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.